I need you to know that who you are is who your creator intended for you to be. Each of us were born with intention, with purpose, with gifts, with a reason. Hi everyone, welcome to the sacred space. Come on in, come stay a while. I'm so excited to have you. I'm Kyra, if you're new here, welcome. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you're not new here, hey girl, what's going on? I'm so excited to have you back. On this channel, we talk all things transmuting our pain into purpose, sacred beauty, living our best lives, and the journey to wellness. If that sounds like something you'd be interested in, definitely stay a while, join the family. We're so excited to have you. Today's episode, I had to get comfortable, okay? I got my feet crossed, all right? We gotta get comfy, we gotta get grounded, okay? Usually we do our sacred beauty shout out at the end of the video, but y'all, let's just get straight into it, okay? The hair is giving what it needs to give, like, do you see this? Can you get into this? So my hair is actually a flexi rod set on blown out hair. I blew it out a few days ago and sectioned it off with some cream and oil, flexi rodded it, put like 11 rods in, um, and then I've just been doing that, rolling it back up every night. I also recorded a video of it that is on my Instagram and on TikTok. It might be here on YouTube Shorts, so definitely check it out, but the hair is giving glamour, okay? Like I needed something that was giving girly and feminine and just beautiful. I feel like as my hair gets longer, my hair be going up in a bun, it be going in a ponytail and then everything just kind of goes pew like this down from there and it's so important which is why sacred beauty is one of our pillars I really believe that it's so important to take care of ourselves and take pride in the way that we look and beautifying ourselves and putting ourselves out there in the world how you look is a reflection of how you feel and I know that like the low vibrations of it all the depressive episodes and all the things like they creep up on me in subtle ways when I see myself slacking on the way I take care of myself and I'm so sure that there are other people out there who can relate so yeah girl do your hair do your nails put a little makeup on put yourself together feel yourself so that you can be proud of what you're contributing to the world and feel good about yourself you can feel confident as you present yourself into the world the way that God intended all right y'all so let's go ahead and just jump right in so in today's episode we are going to be talking about identity shifts this has been such a huge theme in my life for months and months and months now I feel like so many of the troubles we experience in these 20s and in these 30s and just navigating life in general, like teenagers, even younger, really does come from not being rooted in who you are and knowing that your identity is yours. It is unique. It is your God-given birthright. You already have it. And we spend so much time searching out in the world, trying to find ourselves. And we'd be out here, out sad, okay, confused, lost in the sauce, misaligned, and no more. We're not doing that. We don't have to. There's a better way. And I want to share that with y'all. The mantra, the affirmation that I really want to just let simmer over all of us for this video is that there is freedom in being you. You were born to stand out. I just want you to let that marinate on your spirit for a second, okay? Because you have to say it. You have to affirm it. You have to believe it. It is the truth. And I want to just break down a little bit how how identity shows up for us, how I came to this revelation, and how it could also apply in your life. So first and foremost, self-discovery, as you know, is a huge theme of the content that I share on this channel and just this journey of life that I'm on and that so many of us are on, which is why you're here watching this video, right? I believe that there are so many of us that are either confused about who you are feel unsettled or not confident in who you are, are trying to fit in in places that you are made to stand out, just so caught up in the world. And first and foremost, I need you to know that who you are is who your creator intended for you to be. Each of us were born with intention, with purpose, with gifts, with a reason. I am such a big believer that everything happens for a reason and in divine order. Things do not just happen on accident just for like, woo like just because like child nobody no of course that's my belief system right and so for me i really believe that so much of figuring out who you are is having to go back to god and ask go back to your creator go back to source whatever makes you feel safe and closer to the divine right 
you have to go back to God to figure it out. And child, I know, I know, because depending on where you are in your journey and depending on the space that you're in, it's like we do not be trying to hear that, right? A lot of times we be wanting to be so in the world because culture and social media and just the way of the world is everywhere from the time you open your phone the time you go on instagram the music you listen to the conversations you're a part of we're so influenced subconsciously by other people and that's another thing we spend so much time scrolling on social media subconsciously consuming an overload of information of personas of projections okay and it's not healthy and i think it plants these seeds in us of confusion or lack of worthiness or like incompleteness. And none of that is true. None of it. First of all, what you have to know is that you were created by divine design for a reason, okay? Hear me and hear me well. This is coming from my heart. You were created with a purpose, with an intention. There is a reason that you are you. There's a reason that you are struggling to fit in to social groups or to fit into what everybody else is doing. There's a reason that it's harder for you to feel like you're clicking or like you see yourself in other people 100% because you weren't designed to. You are a unique being and we're only able to get clarity about who we are right? Clarity is the opposite of confusion. We're only able to get clarity about who we are and how we show up in the world through spending that time in devotion, through spending that time with God and being devoted, looking within rather than looking without. I believe that all the answers that we need really do lie within. And so setting your intention to create that quiet time for yourself, to create that safe space for yourself, to sit with yourself and reflect and explore yourself. And what this looks like in a practical terms, like in real life is like, when you feel the urge to pick up the phone and call one of your girlfriends and ask her what she thinks you should do or run a thought that just came out of your mind by another person, sit with it, simmer on it, journal it out, meditate on it, pray on it, just be still, be present with it. like almost resist the urge to get confirmation from external sources. Because what happens so often is we be seeking confirmation from people outside of ourselves and they're never going to be able to fully confirm the identity that you have. They're not going to be able to confirm the messages that God has downloaded into you because they are not in your body, okay? They might be able to confirm it in terms of if God shared that with them or if that's something that they feel is a calling for you, but you will know and you won't have to go seek that. And so often in this journey of discovering ourselves, which happens, like I said, in these teenage years, in these 20s and in these 30s, and maybe later, child, I don't know. But what happens so often is that we're seeking external validation, seeking confirmation from others and from the world about who we should be. And then you get left high and dry because it's not sustainable. Put on, it's almost like putting on a costume and like trying to perform into a certain role, trying to be accepted into a certain role, and then always feeling depleted. Never feeling fully nourished or feeling fully complete because you always feel like there's something missing because it's not authentic to you and i want us as a community y'all are my friends my soul tribe i want us to be freed from that because it does nothing for you it does nothing for you and this is a message that i am continuing to deepen within myself because it is so true for myself personally I spent a lot of time, particularly over the past couple of years, trying to find where I fit in. And truthfully, I went through a deep period of spiritual rebirth and, and um, deepening of self where I felt so confident, so aligned, so spiritually rooted. And what happened was I felt so disassociated from the world and I felt a need to almost like reassimilate, if that makes sense. Is that a word? I don't know, but we gonna go with it. I felt a need and a pull to almost force myself to fit into spaces that I had outgrown because it was like, how do you operate in this world at such a young age with such a deep awareness of who you are and who God is and how God is working through you and still show up in the world like a regular 20 something year old? It's hard, okay? That ish is hard. And so for me, the way that that manifested was seeking validation within friendships, 
asking people for confirmation of things that I had already received and them not being able to confirm it anyway, feeling more confused, trying to fit into specific, um, specific belief systems and root myself in groups of people and sisterhoods based on having the exact same core belief systems and it wasn't giving what it needed to give. The gag about it is I thought that that meant, okay, I just gotta live this lone wolf life. Okay, I guess I just gotta be out here on my own. And that's not what it meant at all. It meant that I was out of alignment with who I authentically have been called to be and how I am to show up in the world. And so because of that, I was seeking validation in spaces that were never meant to give it to me. In spaces that I was really to observe and contribute and just to be poured into and pour into others and be used as a vessel, I was seeking confirmation from people who couldn't provide it to me and as a result felt like I didn't belong there and that wasn't true I am more than enough you are more than enough we absolutely have the right and the honor and the privilege to be in our sisterhood circles to be in these villages of our friendships and our families and romantic relationships and careers and all the things and take up space authentically who you are the way that God designed and if you are not accepted for who you are and how you show up in the world Child, you ain't supposed to be there anyway. You're not supposed to be there. My therapist just told me this and now I'm gonna tell you. You are not supposed to be anywhere that you feel you cannot be 100% yourself or that you need to conform yourself. I don't even think people want us to conform as much as we put pressure on ourselves to conform. I believe that it is hard for people to process. The world is what I mean when I say people. I do believe that it can be hard sometimes for people to process us being authentically ourselves when they're not 100% authentically being themselves. But more often than not, it's a story that we tell ourselves. So tell yourself a new story. Rewrite it. Spending time getting to know yourself is so incredibly important. And some of the things I mentioned to y'all earlier are journaling, meditating, praying, being outside in nature, being still, right? Allowing the divine downloads to pour into you, allowing God to drop these divine messages and these enlightenments into you, being still enough to see the signs. One of the prayers I pray over my life every day is God, I thank you in advance and I pray that you continue to speak to me in a language that I can understand. I see signs all around me. Synchronicity is so, so, so prevalent in my life. It's been transformative. And I've become aware of the fact that I may see synchronicity where other people just see everyday life. Let that marinate for a second. And the same may be for you in whatever way that looks, right? And so taking that time to get still enough to hear the whispers from God, figure out how are you to show up? Which ways are you being called to show up and operate in your life? The dreams that we be out here trying to make manifest as so many people, I feel like the word manifest is just a, um, a buzzword at this point. But the dreams that we be trying to make manifest, like are you spending time with yourself and your creator to actually get clarity on if the things you are trying to make manifest are in alignment with you? Are they actually a part of your divine desires or are they something that you've seen somebody else have? Because guess what, friend, you will never ever be able to live a fulfilled life trying to live out somebody else's dream. And this is something even I had to learn through my journey of reading a lot of self-help books or watching these videos on, you know, how I became successful, how I became a millionaire, how I did this. And there are transformative aspects for us to take from these videos, right? And from these books and these teachings to learn more about ourselves. But ultimately, the calling is within you. It's inside of you, inside of your spirit, inside of your soul. And so as we seek to see success by following somebody else's roadmap, you are never going to find lifelong success by being somebody else. The step somebody else took can be a guide map for showing you how to go within and maybe find what steps align with you and what steps you need to create on your own. But trying to follow steps one through 10 and steps A through Z on how to be the best, insert here, is always gonna leave you high and dry because you're nobody else, you're you. You're unique, your gifts are unique, your calling is unique, your purpose is unique, the way you show up in the world is unique. The people need you. They don't need the caricature version of you. They don't need the version of you that's trying to be somebody else, they need you. 
And something that I heard so powerful from a spiritual teacher that I really admire was about the fact that what about there are people in the world that need to receive something from you and they can only receive it in the package that you come in with the voice that you have, with the gift that you have, because they might not be able to receive it from another spiritual teacher or from a pastor or from a family member or from a friend or from a monk or from the world, right? You may not be able to receive these teachings and these gifts and these messages from somebody else in the same way that you're able to receive them from me. And that's why it's so incredibly important that I and that you operate in our divine gifts. You don't get to experience the magic and the beauty of this moment of us sitting here in this intimate space, having a conversation about becoming the best, highest version, most authentic, aligned version of ourselves if Kyra was still out here in the world trying to figure out how to be like everybody else, okay? And the gag is trying to be like everybody else creeps up on you real subtle. I feel like a lot of us would naturally be like, mm, sis, that's not me. Because even me, I'm a very unique person. I've always been different. I'm not a trend follower. I don't even care about trends. And I'm not knocking nobody who does. This is just my truth. It's never, it's just never been something that really moves me, right? But at the same token, consuming people's lives, watching how other people were having success, admiring their success and trying to um, re-emulate that in my life always left me high and dry because the source that I was getting the information from was not the divine source within. It was the source of another person. And so I'm trying to get God's blessings from a third party and it's like, says it don't work like that. It don't work like that. They can lead you to it, but you're going to have to get up in that well and drink, you know? In this video, I really just wanted to speak life into you. I wanted to remind you that who you are has a purpose and a meaning and it's valuable. Your calling is sacred. Your calling is waiting on you. And have you ever thought about the fact that if you don't answer the call, you may never know. Who is trying to continue to be out here living a life that feels unfulfilled and feels confusing and stressful and all the things? Like, sis, not me. I don't know. I don't want that for you. I don't want that for myself or for any of my loved ones. And I feel like it's time to wake up and answer the call. And I trust that as you've received this message and as you let it marinate on you, I trust that you're going to receive confirmation via signs and synchronicities, via whichever way the divine communicates with you and whichever way you're connected with the most high that confirm for you who you are and how you are to show up in the world that give you your next step i don't think we get the whole staircase we be wanting the whole staircase which is why i think we search the world and skirt what is the word scour which is why we search the world so much for that validation and for that confirmation but i don't believe that we get it by seeking it in the world i believe that it comes to us bit by bit and let one step show up you take that step and then the other step shows up and you just go brick by brick brick by brick so much of our confusion and our frustration in life and especially i could say for myself is like this need to control this need to know how it's all going to work out and this need to just have everything all figured out and you get it little by little you don't get it in big amounts. You don't get it in these drastic, you know what I'm saying? Like big transformative, big bang theory events. Sometimes you do, and that happens in the forms of spiritual awakenings, rebirths, devotions to our faith journeys, for sure. That's like the initiation, if you will. But the, the living it out is day by day. It's moment by moment, brick by brick. So just go one step at a time and be gentle with yourself. One of my beloved sacred spiritual teachers, Layla Delia, she always says, journey in grace. Be gentle with yourself on the journey. And it couldn't be more true. Another thing I want to share with y'all really quick, and this is for my young people out here in the world that are in college or like in the swing of your career, trying to figure it out. I spent such a long time in my life 
doing what other people told me I should do and getting further and further and further away from who I really felt called to become. And I believe that that also served a purpose because here I am to be able to share the story with you. So it all comes full circle. But I spent so much time in confusion about what my gifts are and how I am supposed to show up in the world because I was looking to other people to answer that question for me. And so if you are out here in the world like me, in the middle of a career shift, in the middle of a spiritual awakening, in the middle of a life shift, keep going. Be gentle with yourself and know that you're going in the right direction. I was pursuing what I thought would give me success and pursuing a career with a job title that I thought made it sound like, well, she's smart. Like she, she really be out here doing her big one. Like I thought, you know what I'm saying? I thought being a marketer and um, working in marketing was like, I thought it was all that in a bag of chips. Like I thought that, <laughs> let me give you all a quick story time. I wasn't planning on do to, doing this, but I'm gonna do it and hopefully this receives you well. So when I was in college, no, 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 let's go back, let's go back. When I was in high school, I never wanted to go to college. I remember sitting in my guidance counselor's office one more times in a few, and we would literally be going through the list of majors. And I'm telling you, we would pull the list apart and it wasn't one thing that stood out to me. And that had a lot to do with what I was experiencing in my own personal life and, and just other things. But none of it was interesting to me. Doctor, no thanks. Accountant, mm, not so much. Marketing, no. Like all these things, right? Everything. God is my witness. You could ask my guidance counselor, she would tell you. I took the whole career test thing and the thing said I should be a crossing guard. A crossing guard, sis. Like, and maybe I will be the crossing guard that helps cross people through the journey of their life very much. But I didn't feel called to any of those things. I wanted to go to cosmetology school. I was so fascinated with transformation and with glam and beauty, hair, makeup, all the things. I was so just like enamored by the way that we can beautify ourselves and just make ourselves, um, you know, transform ourselves, right? And how we can care for our hair, the porosity of our hair, all the things, all of the things that we could go down a whole rabbit hole. and. I received some advice from someone who played a really big role in my life at the time, who basically was like, go to college. You need to go to college. Cosmetology school will always be there and go to college. Like, and that was it. And the advice was go to school, take out student loans. The loans will help you cover your expenses with your refund check while you are figuring your way through school and go to school. You can major in liberal arts and figure out what you wanna do later. I gotta say in hindsight, this was not great advice, okay? I'm grateful for it. I know that it was coming from a great place, but it put me on the path of a long road of confusion. And uh, I ended up going to college. I was lost in the sauce. I transferred schools. I didn't know what I was there for. I called myself wanting to be a nurse because um, nurses get secure jobs and they make a lot of money and because it sounds nice, right? That went out sad. It was very short lived. I dropped out of college very briefly. I took a semester off and I had no intention on going back to school. I visited some cosmetology schools. I circled the block on some old dreams, but I've just felt like I started college, I gotta finish it. Like I'm gonna have to pay these student loans back one way or the other. So I might as well just stick it out. I got advice from a friend um, on communications, which is what my bachelor's degree is in, and media, and how that aligns with my interests, which are using my camera and using my voice. And I'm like, okay, this aligns, this makes sense. And so there was some harmony in that for sure. And then I ended up feeling super woe is me, lost in the sauce. I was not prepared to go out into the world and get a job. I didn't have any work experience. I didn't know um, what I wanted to work, what type of job I wanted to work in. I, I couldn't see myself sitting in somebody's PR firm. Um, I just didn't know. And so I ended up pursuing my master's degree, my graduate program at USC. And that 
journey in and of itself was a blessing. It was so eye-opening and, you know, awakening. Um, and it was such a necessary part of my journey. And so then I went to grad school and got a whole lot of student loan debt, okay? Um, pursuing a degree in digital social media, which works out because it's something that I do and something that I find value in. But ultimately, this is really, the story is really a testament of how I was seeking and pursuing these degrees to give me confirmation or to give me purpose in what God had already downloaded into me when I was very young. And so I was seeking and searching and trying to figure it out. And through that process, I learned the word marketing, okay? Because I didn't know what marketing was. No, 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 that's cap, I take that back. I took marketing honors actually in high school, fun fact, I took a marketing honors class when I was in high school and I failed it. And I know this because I still have some of the projects that I worked on in my Google Drive. You know what the gag is, y'all? I was good at it. It wasn't hard for me, but I wasn't interested. I failed the class because half the time I didn't do my work. It was like pulling teeth to get me to actually work on the projects. And as I'm saying this to you right now out loud, something is unlocking in my spirit for real because I don't even think I consciously made the connection of just how out of alignment Mmm, I don't even think I've realized up until this point just how much I was really out here moving in the world, doing something that I had got confirmation from years ago was out of alignment for me. Anyway, <laughs> even saying this and sharing this with y'all is very vulnerable for me because of the fact that it's a space that I'm still like trying to pull the other half of my body out of, but I know that you know, I can still provide value in the space. I do have things to contribute. It's a lot. When I was in grad school, came to the awareness about the fact that I could use my skill set for marketing and to help entrepreneurs grow their businesses. And I was so motivated by that because one thing about it, like I'm rooting for everybody black, okay? And that's on period. Like I take such deep pride in my identity as a black woman and I take such pride in being able to create spaces and help people using my toolkit and using my skill set to be able to help advance people's dreams, people who look like me, people who come from environments like I've come from, help them to be able to bring their lives. At the time, it was really to bring their businesses into fruition and take them. The way that my camera has cut off twice while trying to get this out, but I'm gonna stay encouraged because I really need to share this with y'all. I've been wanting to share my story and like it has to come out. It has to come out because I believe that this can liberate somebody. So let me just say this. I had a passion for helping black business owners to grow their businesses, increase their revenue, be able to change their lives through their business endeavors. I had a skill set. I have a very strategy minded brain and I was off to the races, okay? Um, helping people through social marketing to transform their businesses, to take their businesses to the next level, to increase their revenue, all the things. I still do help a select few, and I mean a very select few, handful group of people. Um, I still do consult and help them on that journey because I know that the work is important. Now, through this journey of getting not one, but two degrees, building a career in marketing, believing that this was the only way that it was gonna work and that this was what my contribution had to be. I felt so many times where I felt such, um, my body was sending me signs and signals about how out of alignment I was. And I know this because there were certain elements of my work life, things that I needed to do that when I tell you it was literally like pulling teeth, me having to battle myself and internally fight myself to do just the most basic of basic tasks because I had no desire, had no interest. I felt like they were misaligned with my life. They don't add any value. And why do I have to do this? Like that's very much what I was giving. Like I don't care about this. And I don't believe that any work that you're doing should feel like that. Although I do believe that a lot of us be moving and shaking in the world. And we, as the younger generation, come from a lineage of people who did not have many choices. And so they had to do things to provide and to make a way, regardless of what they wanted to do or what they felt called to do. And I believe that us as the younger generation, the millennials and the Gen Zs of the world, downloaded um, some of that 
ancestral trauma, right? Some of that generational trauma, as we say, um, I would just like to refer to it as like these generational karmic lessons that we've really had to work through. And so anyway, to put a pin in this story, the past year and a half of my life have been a real rude awakening about the fact that the life I was living was not sustainable. It was not an alignment. It was not sustainable and God brought me to where I needed to be and brought me through certain seasons to learn and to contribute and to be poured into but that was not the path that I was to be living and it wasn't sustainable and there was it was not fruitful and it was a dead end it was giving dead end sis like I don't really I don't I don't know how to say it like it was giving dead end and I'm still grappling with that because it's like the identity of the ego version of myself, of the professional persona that I built in the world of being this social marketer, the social girly, the girl that will take your business and give you a strategy that's going to take it to the next level, the girl that can do the behind the scenes on your content. I can still do all these things. That's the gag about it. I don't think these other gifts that we have or these skill sets that we've honed in i don't think that they just magically melt away when you decide that you don't want to take that path and i think that's what's been such a troubling and confusing part for me on my journey with stepping into my authentic identity and stepping into my gifts the way that god intended because it's having to walk away from the version of myself that i built through ego and having to really take root in what spirit has blessed me with and how i am to really show up in the world and that's new territory while it's my lived experience inside of my body and inside of my soul every day figuring out how that makes dollars and cents and how I can contribute in an authentic way is scary. It's scary as hell. It's scary. Let's just call it spade a spade. It's scary. And truth be told, I don't even believe that it's all our responsibility to figure out, okay, well, how is this going to make money and how is this going to make dollars and cents? Like I said, I think that dollars and cents is a very worldly, egotistical survival, right? Maslow's hierarchy of needs, very survival, basic level need that's very real. Let me be crystal clear about it, okay? Like, it's very real, but it's very real, but it's also very fleeting, because when you are plugged into the source, okay? When you are plugged into the source, when you are in relationship with your creator and devoted to growing in God and trusting the path that God has carved out for you and trusting that your soul incarnated onto this earth for a reason and a purpose and that everything you experienced is for a reason and it matters and it adds value, the opportunities that are supposed to be for you just come to you. The money comes from wherever it's available. That's what Deepak Chopra, uh, another beautiful spiritual teacher, has preached for a long time. The money comes from wherever it is available at the time. And so taking root in that, being confident in the fact that I don't know how all this is going to work out. I don't have the answers. But I know that through staying devoted and through learning about myself and learning who I am and how I am to take up space in the world and being confident in that, it will make a way. That's why a lot of the people that we see that are successful, that we admire, a lot of the reason that they're successful is because of the fact that A, they work hard, but B, they know who they are. They know who they are and they know what they were put here to do and you mimicking what they're put here to do is not going to make you successful. Oop. They're successful because they followed their path and because when they received divine downloads, they listened to them and they created whatever it was that was put inside of them to share. All of us have the capacity to do it. Every single one of us. It doesn't matter if you consider yourself right brain, left brain, analytical, creative. It don't matter. You have the capacity to be an alchemist, to take the things that are being birthed inside of you and make them manifest in the real world. You got this. And so now as I am embarking on this quest of taking up space in my gifts and contributing my gifts into the world, showing up authentically in the calling of things I've always felt called to do and things that I'm continuing to be led to do, it feels so aligned. I know that I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be in life, no matter how hard, because life still be life in, like let's be very clear. I know that I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be because of the fact that I feel peace. Peace that surpasses anything I could describe to you. 
And I could tell you it's a night and day difference from when I was doing work that I didn't feel aligned to, to being on purpose now and feeling so aligned. Like what I'm doing with y'all right now, I could do this all day. You probably noticed because I talk a lot. I could do this all day. I talk to people in my real life about our self-development, about our healing journey, about being well and taking care of ourselves, about our spiritual development. I be doing my friends makeup and doing their hair and living my best life and doing my hair and doing my makeup. I did my nails myself. Like I feel like I'm just so, um, in alignment with who God has intended for me to be and I feel so on purpose and I'm just so truly blessed by that and grateful because I spent such a long time in my life not knowing and I never want to go back to that and that's why I made this video because I want you to know that there is another way there is always another way you have what it takes you were made by divine design who you are, who you are meant to be. You are worthy of it all. What I want you to take away from this video is that there is freedom in being you. Take up space in who you are. Spend time getting to know yourself. That's our mind, body, soul work, okay? That That's what today's episode is giving. It's not giving a laundry list of things. It's giving devote. Be honest with yourself about the spaces and places you've been in where your soul felt like this is where I'm supposed to be. And be honest with yourself about those seasons where it's like, child, I'm lost. This is not where I'm supposed to be at all. It's not giving what it needs to give. You gotta be honest with yourself about that. You really, really, really gotta be honest with yourself about that because it sets you free. And once we're able to be honest with ourselves and we can be honest with other people, we can be honest with God, with our creator, and then that's how you get back into alignment. It's not as complicated as we make it seem. Depending on how big you've built your ego up and how big you've built up this identity of who you are, it's gonna take some time to chip away those layers for sure. And it can be painful and it can be scary, but just know that the most authentic version of yourself is waiting on you. Know that the childlike version of you that has joy and peace and is untouched and unfazed by the trauma and the life events and the being out here in the world is waiting on you. Like he or she loves you, is waiting to give you a hug, to love on you, to pour into you, is right there waiting to receive you with open arms. And the people that are meant to receive what you are sharing, the community, the people that you're gonna bless, the rooms and spaces that you will enter just by being your authentic self, it's gonna make room for you. And when you find it, you're going to know from the depths of your soul that, yep, this is exactly where I'm supposed to be. So I hope this video was helpful. I hope that it blesses you. Um, it ended up being a lot longer than I thought. That story time came out of nowhere, but evidently it needed to be shared for somebody, even if it's just for one person. And even if that was maybe for myself. But yes, I thank you all so much for tuning in to this video. Don't forget to like this video if it resonates with you. Share it with a friend. Comment down below. I want to hear from y'all. I want to have a conversation about this. Hang out with me on TikTok and Instagram for more content like this, for more conversations like this. And until next time, y'all be safe out here in these streets, okay? I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. God is still the greatest. And I will see y'all soon. Bye.